Hey guys, um, sorry it's been so long since, well, I mean, it's been a few days since I've made a new video. Um, I've been having some difficulties with my screen recorder, but I got that all sorted out, so let's just get on with the lesson. Um, today we're going to be talking about something called constant variables, which is bas basically just a way to... Uh, kind of safeguard some of your data from being modified. So, um, let's just, um, let's try to make a program where the user's going to input a radius and we're going to output the area of a circle with that radius. Um, if you don't really know how to do that, uh, I'll, t I'll just tell you the formula is pi times the radius squared. So let's go ahead and make an integer radius. And then have the user enter the radius. And then um, let's also, above this, make a floating point variable called pi. And I'll just set it 3.14. I won't go any more precise than that because it's not really necessary. And then the area will be um, pi times the radius squared. So we'll just multiply it by itself. Okay. By the way, on a little side note, I did kind of get rid of all that junk in my prompt to keep things clean and easy to understand. Again, don't worry if your prompt doesn't look like this. I had customized mine a little bit. But this way, it's, uh, it's just the information that we need, uh, and nothing more. Okay, compile just fine. Radius, I'll go ahead and do 10, because that'll be simple. Area is 314 uh, units, whatever that might be. Um, okay, so this is actually correct. Uh, this program is totally workable, and uh, it works just fine. Um, but the only thing is... Um, what if, uh, maybe, um, somehow we accidentally modify pi, and we accidentally set it equal to 2.1 or something. Maybe we have another variable that's called you know, something similar to pi, and we accidentally think that we're assigning it to that, but we end up doing a little typo, and we end up typing pi instead. Um, what happens if we accidentally do that? Well, we compile just fine, and when we run, uh, we get an incorrect area. So, that's obviously not desirable, because we don't want incorrect results. Um, but now, it's really hard to kind of track down where that error is happening. I mean, are we doing something wrong when we get the input for the radius? Uh, is our formula maybe incorrect? Uh, so things can get a little bit tricky when something like this happens. So there's a way to make this an easier process, and that's to use constant variables. So instead of this just being a normal floating point variable, let's go ahead and make it a constant floating point variable. Now let's try compiling again. Now we get an error, and it tells us in function main, line 12, assignment of read-only variable pi. So it, it's telling us that in line 12, we're doing some assignment with a with the variable called pi, which we've told the compiler is read-only, and that's what constant means. So at compile time, we're being told that what we're doing wrong, and where we're doing it wrong, and pretty much how to fix it, which is just to you know, delete this line, or maybe correct it, or whatever. So we delete that, and then we compile, no errors, and we get the proper result, 314, about. Um, so that's, that's an example of why using constant variables would kind of aid us in our programming um, to kind of prevent any rogue reassignments. Um, so another use for uh, constant variables are if we're using something like references. So I'll just make a simple output function and have it take an integer reference. 
I talked about references a few, several videos ago, I think. Um, so go, go feel free to go rewatch that video to, if you don't understand references. But um, so it's actually let's get rid of most of this. Um, so keep in mind that when we're using references, we're actually passing in variables, the actual variable themselves. We're not copying the contents of the variable into a new variable. We're actually passing in the variable itself. So if we call output with n, um, basically a temporary reference is created that references to n. So it's the exact same data. Um, now the tricky part is maybe, again, we do a typo or something. Uh, easy to do when we have these one letter variable names and we actually end up doing some reassignment here and we reassign A to something like 2. Well, um, you might not think this is a big deal because it's just, it's all contained within this scope, right? We're not going to be modifying anything outside of the scope of this function so it still should be pretty easily to easy to isolate where we're going wrong. Um, and the, the thing is, that's actually not what's going to happen. Because if then outside of the function we see out, you know, something like this. Um, let's see what happens here. Okay, so we get 2 here, which is weird because we were expecting 10. And then we also get n times 2 is 4, which is weird because we were expecting 20. So it's kind of hard to figure out where this is going wrong. Because, I mean, if we just look at main, everything looks okay because output, that should just be outputting the, the number. So then in that function is where we'd have to go to figure out that we're actually modifying the reference, which does end up modifying the variable in, in the scope of main. So that's not what we want to do. So the way around this is to use constant variables again, but in this case, constant references. So instead of just a normal integer reference, we make a constant integer reference. Um, I think I mentioned, but C-O-N-S-T is how you declare stuff as constant. Um, but yeah, constant integer reference. So now if we try to compile, again, we get a nice compile error. It tells us line 6. We're trying to mess up some read-only reference called A. So now we see, oh, exactly, right here, that's where we're messing up. Didn't want to be doing that. Now we can compile, and we get the desired results. So constant... Uh, references are very helpful when, because uh, we still get that uh, performance boost by using a reference instead of copying. Uh, well, with an integer, which is only four bytes, it's not as big of a deal. But if we had some class that we were passing in here, which ha was uh, had like ten integers, integer members or something, um, the reference would kind of save us a lot of time. But uh, we can use the constant qualifier to. Um, prevent ourselves from accidentally modifying that data. Um, okay, so I should also talk about constant pointers because they're a little bit tricky. Um, let's make two uh, variables here and then let's make an integer pointer. Um, so we can do stuff like this. Uh, just nothing constant about any of this. We've seen all this before. Um, but let's say you wanted to make this variable, or this pointer, a constant pointer. Meaning that you want to make it so that uh, we can't change what this pointer points to. Um, the way that you do that is you don't put the constant here, as you might expect. You're thinking constant pointer, um, but no, you don't put the constant there. You actually put it here. And when the constant is here, that means that it's not going to be... Um, you're not going to be allowed to do something like this. Reassign a different address to that pointer. Because if we do, we'll get our compile error. This is a read-only variable pn. Um, so this basically, having the constant here, means this is a constant address that this pointer is. So it's not going to change address. Now if we put the constant here, 